Well, you can buckle up for the blitz on health care. Democrats, led by President Obama, are set to launch a huge new information campaign in support of the health care overhaul. The reason? Look at this. The latest Pew Research poll shows only 38% of Americans support the health care law. Razzie Rasmussen, he says 53% of Americans want it repealed. That's not good for Democrats, who had planned months ago on making this their platform going into the November midterms. Michelle Malkin is a conservative columnist and a Fox News contributor and my guest now. Michelle, so now, you know, we've been covering the fact that the Democrats had not been touting health care at all. Now, apparently, they've decided to man up and they're, they're exhausting all sorts of money to go out there and tout the new insurance provisions that kick in this month, including 26 years old up to, you can stay in your parents' medical plan, no co-pays for preventative care, and they can't take away coverage from anyone when they get sick. They're fighting back, saying, you Republicans think people hate it, we're going to make them love it. Is it a good strategy? I don't think so, although to the extent that they'll be spending money um, that uh, won't be directed at uh, dislodging Republicans, I, I suppose the Republicans will think this is a good uh, strategy because it's uh, pouring money down a, a big hole. And what you have is um, progressive groups, um, Obamacare advocates uh, who are all banding together, very intrepid, uh, to launch this perpetual campaign, and it has been for the last two years anyway. Um, and and much of this is being strategized on K Street in Washington. And I think that's very important that people um, have some sense of transparency here and understand that this is a completely astroturfed project. Uh, Health Care for America Now, HCAN, um, is funded by George Soros, many left wing groups uh, tied to the Center for American Progress. Um, and these are in no way representative of the small businesses and consumers uh, who are being harmed and who are facing the the costly consequences of this federal health care takeover. And none of this educational campaign can wipe away the fact or whitewash the fact uh, that it has been a miserable failure. If you measure them by their own goals, uh, they said it would reduce cost. It has not. They said it would incre increase access. It has not. And in fact, if you, you, you talked about the, the young people, uh, they keep touting the fact that more young people will get on health care when in fact in the real world, in the health care market, what's happening in the infant market is that these insurers, five of them here alone in Colorado, are canceling coverage uh, for young people because of the costs of all of the increased mandates that are being heaped on them. You know, but Michelle, and, and you mentioned Healthcare for America now, that is the George Soros group, that is one of the groups that's going to be holding these hundreds of rallies and educational events to inform voters about the new provisions. I think it's interesting because we heard from Kathleen Sebelius uh, last month that the problem with these polls, the reason only 30%, 38% of Americans support the health care law is because they've been misinformed. It's the result yes. of misinformation. And I had a debate on the show not long ago asking, is that insulting to the people who actually are not misinformed? They know. They know that 26-year-olds are going to get covered. They know, you know, the things that, that the Democrats are about to tout. But they also have a fundamental belief that it's not going to bend the cost curve down, that it's going to add to the national deficit, and so on. And therefore, they don't need to have educational rallies and events to be more informed, as Kathleen Sebelius would like them to be. Yeah, you're exactly right, Megan. It is condescending. But more than that, I think it's classical liberal thinking. Uh, they never admit that there's something wrong, fundamentally flawed about the product. It's always a matter of marketing. If only they can spin it uh, more. Um, if, if, if only they can uh, tell one more sob story. And that's classic Alinskyite tactics, too, is to put a bunch of left-wing uh, human interest special shields in front of them so that they don't have to answer the hard uh, questions about the costs and consequences of imposing these massive federal mandates. And I want to bring you back, because this is, um, I think, also very important. Uh, during the heat of the Obamacare battle, Peter Orzag, who was the outgoing um, head of uh, the uh, um, White House budget director, um, basically issued a threat to Doug Elmendorf, uh, the CBO director, and said, you better be careful and make sure that you're not issuing reports that overestimate uh, the costs and underestimate the savings. Um, and this is part of the bully tactics that we've seen from this White House, whether it was Kathleen Sebelius telling insurers to shut up about the real reasons for their rate increases, or um, Doug Elmendorf and the CBO talking about the what would actually happen in the real world. And it's all coming true. Um, and, and what you have here is, is essentially an, an 
an online campaign, an offline, offline campaign, to shut up the critics who were right all along. But, but don't they need to do something with respect to these rallies or this, you know, information campaign, Michelle? Because Rasmussen's been on here repeatedly saying that the president's approval rating, the Democrats' approval rating, the polls we're seeing for the Democrats going in the midterm elections, he said they are fundamentally and directly tied to this health care overhaul and how much people disdain it, and not just it, but the process by which it passed. I don't know that they can make people feel better right now about the process, but don't they have to try to make them feel better about the law? Sure, they will. And this is their bread and butter. This is how um, so many of these community organizing groups work. And they are going to hinge the success of, of this educational campaign on the cult of personality, on, um, on whatever likability Obama has left and his trust. Well, and, and, I and, 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 and let me just interrupt you for yeah. one second, because you made a point earlier that is, that is validated by the article, because it says that Families USA, a consumer group that supported the overhaul, has been gathering stories of how the law has affected real people, and it's going to use real sort of families and kids and so on and then they'll lend its story blank, bank to the bank. administration. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, that's right. And uh, if you look at not only HHS, but also the healthcare czar, the appointee, Nancy DeParle, they've been soliciting these kinds of stories. This is how they argue policy on emotion and on anecdote. And uh, Barack Obama and the White House will surround themselves with these same types of people in their uh, supposed citizen town halls. They did it during the whole campaign to pass Obamacare in the first place. And I think it's um, very important for the Republicans to arm themselves themselves with their own counter stories and I've been trying to make this point uh, over and over again whether whether it's health care or any other domestic policy the, the the stories of these small businesses that are being decimated uh, or the ones that are going to have to file all of this onerous paperwork I mean we had the Republicans um, fight on the Senate floor just yesterday to try and, and turn back some of these onerous 1099 tax form applications we need to hear from these right. people these real people to counter those stories Michelle Malkin, thank you so much for your perspective. Take care, Megan. See you soon.